Hey guys, welcome back. So you may be aware that the Prusa i3 Mark II has recently upgraded. So the new firmware on the printer is 3. Point something 0.10, something like that. Um, and that's done a few things to it. And then also the actual Prusa version of Slicer has updated as well. So Slicer with the three, slick 3R three as Tom says. Now, um, there's been some changes there um, and I wanted to test out the surface layers. Now, I don't think there was actually a new surface layer added, but I thought I'd test all of them and just see how they came out because I recently tried, uh, which one was it? I think Octogram Spiral or something like this, and it actually looked a bit of a mess. So, um, I printed a 40 by 40 millimeter and five millimeter high, just kind of a little square, just to test each surface layer out. So. I'll put these aside and I'll go from the top as the list goes on the slicer. So the first one is, and you can just about see the uh, honeycomb infill there. So the settings, just to let you all know, 15% uh, infill, uh, 0.3 layer heights. Uh, there were two perimeters, three top and three bottoms. Um, I had avoid crossing perimeters ticked. Um, 25 millimeters per second on the top and 40 millimeters per second on the bottom layer. So first of all, you can see the bottom layer there. So let's bring this to the camera and try to focus there. So as you can see, the, uh, the printer never does that nice on my bottom layers. Um, and you can kind of see, we zoom in, you can see that, you know, so it kind of, it squishes some layers nicely, misses some layers. Um, Really nice bit in the corner there, because the bed is so not very good on the Prusa as it turns out. Um, and the rectilinear, as you can see, not that nice either actually. Um, I think maybe I might actually turn my extrusion, mul extrusion multiplier up, if that's the right word, um, because that might solve this. And also, I'm not sure if I trust this blue PLA, so also as a disclaimer, this is BQ blue PLA. Um, I thought we had done well for me in the past. But I seem to have a lot of problems with it at the moment, and it may be due to this PLA. So maybe if I did this test on another PLA, another filament, it may turn out better. So I might do that soon, and we'll compare the results and see how they look. But So that's rectilinear. Um, you can see nice straight lines, decent coverage, um, except the few patches that is not so good. Put that aside. And now the next one is um, concentric. Nope, not concentric. Where's our concentric one? Uh, yeah, sorry, our concentric one. Yeah, this is concentric. So, not very good at all, to be honest. So, as you can see, it's tried the little kind of... It's hard to even explain. Little patterns um, on the bottom actually looks quite nice. It looks like a snowflake. It's actually the coolest looking bottom I've uh, actually ever seen, I think. Um, and as you can see, it kind of not that nice though. So if I get the light on it, and we can zoom in again, you can see it, again it kind of looks like the layers are squashed in weird ways. Um, not really what I want to see. Not anything smooth squashing. So again, not too happy with that. It might look cool, but it's not really what you want. And it is nice and smooth still. So that is one thing. Um, but yeah, um, as you can see, if anything, just, this just looks like a weird. British flag or something, I think. Um, but you can see the gaps where it does each bit. So as it does it, one corner, and then the next bit concentric, then the next bit, each time it does that, you can see the big difference, the big gap between that, and then a tiny circle in the middle. So it's something you won't want on your print at all. So let's put that next to it. Not very happy with that. So the next one was the Hilbert Curve, and I believe that one was this one, I think. Um, now, this one, um, yeah, <laughs> so as you can see, uh, let's just look at the bottom layer. Bottom layer actually really nice. See that? And these layers look pretty much perfect, um, which is very weird. Um, if I can try and zoom in even more, see that there? It's actually a really, really nice pattern. And this is the smoothest one I think I've ever felt. I mean, you can't feel these gaps at all. In fact, you can. It just you can barely see that make out that pattern. Um, I actually really, really love the bottom of this. It feels so smooth, it's incredible. 
um, and it actually looks so cool. But like I said, if we turn that over, it's a mess, an absolute mess. So let's try doing the squiggly bits too much and it just can't cope with it, to be honest. Um, it's a shame because it came out really nice there, but yep, could not cope with that. So the next one is the Archimedean Chords, I believe it's called. Um, and this one, well, let's have a look at the bottom. Very funny looking bottom. Um, if you can see down here, very strange. Um, almost like it's extruded too much. I guess that's what it is. Um, it's like it gets some out, it doesn't get some out. It's almost like it's got a clog or something. Um, but then it does other bits nicer. So, yeah, really not sure what is going on with that. Um, again, that's pretty smooth. Not quite as smooth as the last one, though. So let's turn this round. And as you can see, it kind of does... I'm not sure how it's done it, really. It doesn't look too bad. Um, it gives a nice pattern. If you look at it from a distance, where it has done one and the other, it actually doesn't look too bad either. Um, so I'm guessing it's kind of come... It might have done all these lines like that and then these lines like that and then those and then those it might be how he's done it I'm not actually too sure i have to look at the tool path in the slicer to see but yeah that's what the pattern looks like anyway um bottom isn't too good the top not too bad and if you wanted to get a nice effect like that actually an easy way to do it and the final one is the octogram spiral and this is what came out quite weird um and it's basically got a big circle and some other weird crap there, which is very strange. So let's look at the bottom. The bottom came is exactly the same like that. Um, and again, the layers, very, very weird layers. So, you know, squashed there. You can clearly see the perimeter lines. Um, the layers get squashed together. Um, yeah, it's almost as if it doesn't move in the right amount so it doesn't move 0.4 millimeters or 0.38 or something like that each time um so i'm not sure how it does that or why it does that um so if someone can explain that that'd be good why the layers look like that and the top is just very rough to be honest um so yeah and you can see the gaps all the way along so it's something you definitely would not want um so yeah these are the five so let's see if we can zoom out here so, out of all of those, probably this one and this one are the best. Um, rectilinear is what most people go with, and it probably is the most ideal. You can see the infill the most, I would say, in rectilinear, but that's because it's such a linear pattern that any differential from that probably shows more, whilst the other patterns hide that. But yeah, let me know your thoughts, um, what surface layers you use, how your surface is going on your Prusa. Obviously in my last video, I explained that my bed definitely isn't level in any way. And um, I definitely struggle with what appears to be warping like this. Um, some bits, some layers go down really nicely. Some layers just have, seem to have these huge gaps in between, uh, which I guess is where the bed's lower all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, so these are the surface layers. Let me know your settings, how you go, um, and if you take any photos of your surface layers, let me know how they look. Cheers, bye.